Hey little shadaddies, I got this little Snapchat filter on cause woo, y'all I'm getting my hair done next weekend. I am so tired of looking like somebody's little dirt bowl, okay? But I got this chai latte and it's so funny because I said I'm gonna get this because um well no it's a hot chai tea I guess I don't I think they had it listed as a chai latte but yeah it's funny because now I'm thinking like the word latte literally means it has coffee in it and that's what I was trying to avoid but I think it's just a hot chai tea and I put cinnamon on it with almond milk it's really good and now I'm here at Trader Joe's again I know I'm going like every week but I'm getting small portions of things I need some more water and I was gonna get some stuff for lunch but now I'm realizing there's a Trader Joe's right near my job so I'm like I can just go there when I'm at work and get stuff instead of having to go in here but that makes me think what can I make for dinner tonight and tomorrow okay i have some salmon got some chickpeas got some salad got some soup i think we can get through today and tomorrow so tuesday i will grab a few things but i do need still need the water so i kind of want to go in there just for the water i don't know hey you guys i know i look like a little tomboy don't mind me but anyway i wanted to talk to you guys about this book that i was well that i finished reading so i read a lot of books and sometimes i'm like oh my gosh they're so good i kind of want to share them with you guys but then i'm like i don't know how many of you guys read or how many of y'all are actually interested so i always kind of draw back from doing that Plus, I return them to the library like instantly so that I can get more. But this one in particular, I did want to share with you guys. So it's called Still Doing Life 25 Lifers 25 Years Later. And this is basically like interviews from each of them and then pictures. And it's not a huge book, as you can see, but the print is pretty small. So basically... I wanted to share this book because I found this to be so, so interesting and really eye opening. So in case you guys didn't know, I did study criminal justice in undergrad and I studied public administration in grad school. Pu public administration is a supplemental degree, master's degree that um, technically it's a business degree. It's an MPA where we also have an MBA, which is a um, business admin. Mine is public admin. But a lot of people get it as a supplement to a social science degree. So whether that be political science, social, um, what is it? I was about to say social media. Um, wow, I just drew a blank. But political science, criminal justice, um, sociology, social work, stuff like that. And a lot of times people go into it in order to like reform things and make policies, work with nonprofits and like people that are having certain life issues. Right. And that was why I went into it. And so I really enjoy learning about like all things crime related all things that fall under criminal justice or law so everything down to like the judicial system recidivism juvenile justice prisons um poverty that leads to crime um just everything encompassing criminal justice like that's literally my passion is the social sciences so i read a lot of books about like wrongfully convicted individuals prison reform police officers and sergeants and lieutenants that have given their take on like policing in america or the judicial system or whatever so this book really caught my eye and i knew i would love it but just listening to the stories i really just i love getting first-hand accounts from people who tell their story but they give you a perspective that you would have never guessed right so there was one lady in here and she talks about how i think she ended up murdering someone 
but she basically says so they're able to go up for like i forget what it's called but it's a term that they use where they're able to like go up after a certain amount of years and like appeal or like try to become free again right and obviously it's a whole process i think you have to like talk to the victim the victim's family has to agree like all this stuff right it depends on your behavior and time served and everything but this lady basically says when she had the chance to do that she didn't even want to because she felt that whatever crime she committed like the victim's family shouldn't have to relive that just because she wanted to become free and she was willing to just remain behind bars because of that and i just thought that was such an interesting outlook because i'm like who would punish themselves to that extent you know what i mean like it's like if you have the opportunity to be free you have served your time you've learned why not take the opportunity you know so that really kind of made me think never heard anyone say that before but then you also have people in there who have just really become totally different individuals people that were in gangs that were very hardcore that have now become like you know very religious or very spiritual or they've just like transformed their mindset so it's just a really interesting book all 25 people had great stories it was amazing to see like even how some of them aged i caught myself really being amazed at how much the men seem to not age as opposed to the women so like this is a picture of one of the women um and then like well he's aged a little bit i guess but yeah that's like another picture i mean it doesn't really matter if they've aged or not but i just thought it was interesting to see like how much people age in prison in prison and their features and things like that and I don't know it's just it was a really really like touching and eye-opening book and I love that people think to do stuff like this and I also love that people are still seeing see look she like barely aged but I love that people are still seeing prisoners as human because I personally think that, you know, there's always room for forgiveness with humans, right? Like some people, I genuinely believe they're sick. Like mentally, it's not all there. They have chemical imbalances. They have true mental illnesses where if they were to be free, they would be repeat offenders. But then there's some people that, you know, they did a crime out of rage. They did a crime out of desperation. They did a crime when they were 13. And to give these people life is kind of like, does this really make sense? You know, there's so much prison overcrowding. And that's not a reason to just release random people. But it is a reason to go back and decide, you know, let's revisit these cases. Let's really look into this. Let's see the progress this person has made. Let's see what the original offense was. Let's see this person's background. Let's figure out if we can kind of, you know, give them a chance of parole or cut their sentence down a bit or whatever it may be you know but yeah i think there's a lot of reform that needs to be done in the u.s criminal justice system in the judiciary system and in the prison system and i'm just glad that these people still have hope that they still have a voice and that there's people that care about them enough to give them a platform i guess because I still view every human as human. I feel like I'm not God, so I'm not the one that can judge them at the end of the day. And I also feel like, and this is just my opinion, I know this is probably an unpopular opinion, but I feel like no matter the crime, people always have the opportunity to reform and be rehabilitated and change. Like I believe in evolution so much and that's probably because I've even watched myself evolve and I've seen myself like grow out of things, gain new new mindsets, um, just like elevate. And if I can see that much growth in myself, then it's like I surely can see that much growth 
in another person. And although I don't believe in people taking other people's lives, I feel like that's like the worst sin you can commit. But I also just feel like, you know, everyone has the opportunity and the ability to transform themselves for the better. So I always leave the open door for that and the hope and, you know, positive mindset around that. I don't like to judge incarcerated individuals because I feel like sometimes people have a reason why they do what they do or they did what they did. And I still want to look at people at the end of the day as being just as human as me. Like they say, no man's sin is worse than another. And just because maybe I sin by drinking um, doesn't mean it is any less than someone who sinned by doing something to get them incarcerated, you know? So if you guys are interested in stuff like this, or even if you just want a interesting book to read in general where you can tap into other people's lives and I think everyone loves a good story you know everyone kind of I think is interested in learning about other people's lives and what led them down whatever route so yeah check it out at your local library you guys and yeah Okay, you guys, I also wanted to recommend reading this book. This book was so amazing. It's called An Inconvenient Cop by Edwin Raymond. And it's a guy who grows up in New York. His mom and dad are both Haitian immigrants, and he grew up in extreme poverty. So, of course, he wanted to make something out of himself. His dream was to become a New York City police officer, which he ends up doing. But once he joins the force, he literally, like, goes through it with his superiors and counterparts. And he just talks about his experiences and navigating navigating policing and how to make policing better based on how he was treated and things he was required to do it's literally so good go check it out I also checked out this um liquor store it I don't know like it was supposed to be like this major liquor store that has like all these different types of liquors and stuff but it was okay I wasn't super impressed anyway after that I went out with my friend and we got some drinks and this little snowman drink was so cute then I got me a nice little Chicago dog. Have you guys ever had Hey, one? friends. Today, I'm trying a new product I ordered. It's called True Sea Moss. Bow. It is blue spirulina or spirulina and mint flavored. It's made in the U.S. It's Irish, wildcrafted, and it has 92 minerals. It has no added sugar. GMO free, 100% natural, and it is 100% vegan. Ooh, I need to tell my friend about this because she's vegan. She might already use this, but whatever. So yeah, I'm going to break the lid. Ah! I really only got this because it's blue. Fun fact, my favorite color is blue. It expires July 2nd, 2024. Um... And you do have to keep it refrigerated. So it came with a cold pack. Ah! I'm scared. Ah! So I've eaten sea moss before plenty of times. I usually get them in my smoothies when I go to this Jamaican restaurant. But this time I'm eating it plain. So you see what it looks like? It's jelly. Wooga, wooga, wooga. And it's mint flavored. I didn't know it was mint flavored when I bought it. I thought it was like some other fruity flavor, but whatever. We're going to take this thing down. No complaints. Let's go. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. That was rough. I wonder how much I need to take. Um, one tablespoon. Okay, so. One tablespoon. I think that was a little bit more than a tablespoon because it was like hanging over. This literally tastes like I'm eating Vaseline. That's the texture. Definitely put this in a shake, guys. <laughs> put it in a shake. 
I usually get like this, <clears throat> the soursop and coconut flavored smoothie with the sea moss. Tastes much better. It has a very distinct smell. I like it though. It smells like old people. It smells like your grandmother's old sweater. <laughs> but good thing I got some food next to me. I made some potatoes. And over here I got some oranges. Woo! <laughs> then I got some wild up. Woo! Alright, let's finish this up. Let's finish eating this Vaseline, guys. Oh my gosh. Mm. That was real, y'all. If you have a gag reflex, don't try this at home. Because that was an interesting texture indeed. Anywho, have a good day. Hey guys, time to have some fun. So my friend and I headed to the steakhouse in DC. I had been wanting to try it for a while. It was super cute inside. I love the decor. I love the lighting. It was just really cozy and chill. And it was a hidden gem, which you guys know I'm all about that. I don't necessarily want to be everywhere with any with everyone these days. So this was perfect. I got the deviled eggs with lump crab meat for an appetizer. And then I got the butcher steak with garlic butter and fries for my main course I also got an Irish coffee and he got a Long Island and a cheeseburger and then I had really 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 wanted to get this homemade ice cream cake oh my gosh y'all it was so good remember the Carvel ice cream cakes that we had growing up this was like 13 times better then I also had a passion fruit um, martini which was really good they came around and lit candles for all the tables it was just such a vibe then we headed over to a next little after party spot, I guess. Um, that's one thing about me and my friends. Like whenever we go out, we always go like to multiple places. We just like hop around and stuff. And I just love that because I love like catching a vibe and then like catching another vibe and then like catching a different vibe. So that was really fun. This was like the nighttime vibe. We didn't eat here, obviously, because we were already full, but we did have, I think I had one drink and he had two, and then we were just sitting by these super warm heating lamps and just vibing out and talking. It was really cool. It was nice to catch up with him. Here I am showing the reserve sign, trying to pretend that I'm important, and I actually booked a section even though I didn't. <laughs> I was saying Instagram versus reality because that's really how people be. They be like, yeah, we bought out this section whole time y'all didn't but anyway it was a really good little evening he ended up wanting to go in around like I think 7 or 7 30 which I was like dang I thought you could hang a little bit you know but we're older you guys we get tired easily so I couldn't blame him so I headed on home with him here's us doing our little diddy bop dance and that was that but thank you guys for watching as usual don't forget to like comment and subscribe and i'll see you guys in the next video bye bye